It's startling, but a significant amount of home purchases fall out due to some simple mistakes that buyers make. And today, we're gonna uncover some of those pitfalls. I'm Chris Nelson, the team lead of the Nelson Home Group, helping buyers and sellers achieve their real estate goals here in the greater Philadelphia area. And as I mentioned today, we're gonna to be talking about some of the pitfalls that end up costing them their transaction. So before we jump into it, let me start with a little story about when I got into real estate 20 plus years ago. It was one of my first transactions and well, one of my clients thought they were doing themselves a favor. We were approaching the finish line. We were, everything was looking good. We were getting ready to make settlement. And I get a phone call from my buyer who was really, really excited because they decided that they were going to pay off their credit card. And not only did they pay off their credit card, they decided to close that credit card. And that decision, although they thought was a good decision to make at the time, ended up costing them their deal. And as we go through this video, you'll understand exactly why. Starting off at the top with some of the pitfalls that buyers find themselves facing when it comes to buying a home, a lot of that starts with listening to the wrong people or having a lot of outside influence. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that mom and dad have your back as well as your best friend who thinks they're a contractor. I know that they have your best interests and they really want to see you happy. But a lot of times they're not the expert in the advice that they're trying to give. Dad is not a contractor, but yet wants to give you advice on things that you should negotiate or look out for or consider before you make settlement on that home. Mom might not be the best to give you the design tips and your friend may not be the best person to kind of help you navigate through some of the financial decisions that you have to make. So one of the best things that you can do up front, although it's great to have their support and have them involved, is make sure that you are getting direction and advice from the professionals. Make sure that your team is strong and knowledgeable in giving you the right advice because outside influence, it's always gonna be there, but it can cost you. It can cost you your deal. Now, when you're buying a home, at the end of the day, unless you're buying it as an investment, it's emotional a lot of the decisions that you make when you're buying a home are emotional. People buy into certain neighborhoods based off of emotional decisions. They feel safe there, they grew up there, they want to see their kids go to school there. However you dice that up, those are all emotional decisions. But some of the things that can really cost you is making decisions out of FOMO, the fear of missing out, making an offer on a property that you may not truly love but because it's in the neighborhood that you want to live in, or it's in uh, the district where your kids are gonna, you, you want them to go to school, buying that house off of those emotional decisions in the long run can really be disastrous. And just like I mentioned earlier, listening to mom and dad and your friends, while well, choosing to work with your friends who might be a realtor or might be a loan officer, again, is a, an emotional decision. Maybe they are great at what they do, but maybe they're not. And if your gut tells you that your friend is gonna be upset because you didn't let them help you, screw them, they're not really your friend. At the end of the day, they should know that you are aligning yourself with the people that you think are best fit to represent you. And sometimes dealing with friends when you're mixing in business just isn't the wisest decision. I've seen a lot of relationships get soiled over trying to mix friendship with business. So if you know at the end of the day, working with a professional that's not your friend, is what's in your best interest, go ahead and do that. But don't make the emotional decision to work with your friend simply because they're your friend. Another thing that's super important when it comes to uh, keeping yourself from making emotional decisions, it's imperative to understand your budget. Really fine tune your budget up front and take into consideration not only your expenses for your home, but your expenses for your lifestyle. You're not gonna wanna stop going out or hanging out with your friends or maybe even enjoying some of your favorite hobbies just to own a home. So make sure that you're figuring out your budget as well as your list of wants versus needs. It's great to have the extra space or maybe to have the extra room for an office, but the key word in all of that is extra. And extra isn't necessarily something that's needed, but make sure that you're sticking to your needs. And if you can sprinkle in some of the things that you want in your transaction, well then, you're ahead of the game. Now, many buyers make this mistake, and I really can't fault buyers at the end of the day because it's really the professional's job to help them understand 
what's going on in the market. But one thing that I've noticed that is a pitfall for buyers is that they don't fully understand the market or they simply have unrealistic expectations. You have to understand the type of market you're in. In this market and the market that we've been in for the last few years and probably will be for the next year or two, this is very much a seller's market. This is not a market where buyers are getting to really come in and make these offers that are below asking and, and bake in all of these different things that, well, generally you just don't get in a buyer's market, right? So just having a fair level of expectation and knowing what's going on in the market, knowing what the average days on market is, right? How fast does it take for a home to go under contract? or what is the average list price to sale price ratio. That kind of tells you in this market, buyers are paying X more than the list price. And if you have that information, well, then you can make a savvy decision as to whether or not you should make an offer or not. But aligning your expectations and understanding the market is imperative, especially in this type of real estate market. Now, another thing that really does fall on the professionals when it comes to educating our clients is making sure that they're getting the right mortgage. Too often I see buyers come into the market, they're super excited and they make an offer on a property and come to find out that they've never shopped their mortgage around. They don't know if they can get a better interest rate, nor do they know if they're really using the right mortgage for the right property, right? For example, if a property qualifies for FHA financing, that may not be a bad mortgage to consider. FHA is actually cheaper right now than it is for conventional loans and it might even require a lower down payment. Or maybe if you're a veteran using the veteran loan or not using the veteran loan based on what you want to do in the future. It's imperative for you to make sure that you understand all of the moving mechanics or semantics when it comes to financing. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm throwing this one in here because it does kind of fall under financing. As I was unpacking the story earlier about how my client thought they were doing themselves a favor and decided to pay off their credit cards and close them out. This is a huge mistake that I see buyers make all of the time. It's simply because of ignorance. But when you are purchasing a home and you are pre-approved, it's imperative for you to maintain your credit profile. And what I mean by maintain your credit profile is don't change anything. Don't buy stuff and don't go and pay things off. Right? A lot of times people will go and make really poor decisions. Right before settlement, I have seen people go and finance furniture for their new home. I mean, because we all need a new couch, right? But buyers go and they will finance furniture, they will pay off a car. I've seen people pay off cars and I've seen people buy new cars because they feel as though, well, I already have the money that I need for my down payment, I know what my mortgage payment's gonna be and I have this money left over to put towards a car. And little do they know, that will change your credit profile. If you think you're doing yourself a favor by paying off a credit card and then closing it, whenever you close a credit card, you actually end a relationship with a creditor. And when that happens, well, your credit score generally takes a dip because the more relationships you have when it comes to credit, the better your credit profile is. Now, of course, you need to pay those people, but the more accounts you have in good standing, the better. Making our way through the list, well, I can't believe how many people will sign a document without either understanding it or taking the time to read it. When you're buying a home, there's so many legal documents and terms and deadlines that you need to be aware of, especially if you're buying a home that's in a uh, association such as a condo or even a homeowner's association. There can be rules and regulations in there that will contradict your lifestyle. I've seen rules and regulations that say you can't have certain dog breeds. I've seen rules and regulations that say you can't have certain cars parked within uh, the development. And once that legal duration expires, it allows for you to say, I reviewed these HOA docs or I reviewed this contract or these mortgage terms. Once that time has come and gone, you no longer reserve the right to use any of that as leverage to back out of a contract. So more than likely it could be a pretty costly expense. And as we're talking about costly expenses, the last thing that I have on my list, well, you've probably heard this a million times and there's no need to beat a dead horse, but the amount of consumers that have purchased a property without having a home inspection is just beside me. This is probably the worst decision that you can make when it comes to negotiating your terms for buying a home. And if you wanna make your offer 
aggressive for the seller, well, that's where you need to get with a realtor or another team that's really aggressive and can help you understand that you don't have to give up a home inspection to make a strong offer to the seller. If you, if anything, any takeaway from this video, this is the one, do not skip a home inspection. And if you're curious to know some of the nightmares that can come with skipping a home inspection, well then check out my previous video on some of the nightmares that happen with home inspections. And with all of that said, friends, once again, I'm Chris Nelson, the team lead of the Nelson Home Group, helping buyers and sellers achieve their real estate goals. I hope you found some value in this video and I hope that it can save you from making a stupid decision. With all of that said, till next time.